After Jesus had healed Peter's mother-in-law, some days later, he was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, probably in Capernaum. And a small crowd gathers who beg him to hear the word of God. So to get a little bit better projection for his voice, he sees Peter's boat over here. Peter's in the boat and he's pulling stuff out of the nets and getting everything ready for the next night's fishing. And Jesus commandeers the boat. Peter, would you put out a little bit in the water? So Jesus sits down in the boat and gives a sermon to the people who are on the shore. Uh, of course, Peter and his brother, his brother is surely there because the pronouns are plural. Peter and his brother Andrew hear the whole thing. And it's possible that over there in that boat, James and John also heard much of what Jesus had said. So, um... After, after the sermon, of which we don't have a, a single word, Jesus says, Peter, push your boat further out. He says, in, and throw your nets. Go out into the deep, which is a compelling term, uh, has connection to the, book of, uh, to the book of Genesis and the creation story. Throw down, throw out your net. Well, Peter protests. We've fished all night. We've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word. Now, Peter has seen Jesus in the synagogue, healed man who had a, 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 a wicked spirit in him. He's seen him heal his mother-in-law. He's heard him now give us sermon. We don't know how long to people from his boat. And he's pretty impressed. So he and his brother move their boat out farther into the water and throw the net over the side. Now, this is not one of those little casting nets where you throw it out, pull it back in, and a few fish. This is a trammel net which has weights, and it drops to the bottom of the, of the sea or the bottom of the lake. And it fills with fish. They're pulling. Peter can see some of the strands beginning to come apart because of the weight of the fish. He hollers to his two partners over there, James and John. They bring their boat. I suspect Jesus is also helping them haul the fish into the boat. They fill both of them, at least enough that the gunnels are just above the water, with the water beginning to lap over the top. And so, Luke says, they came to shore, and every, Jesus called them to be fishers of men, and they left their boats and followed him. But there must be more to the story. Why? Because you can ask yourself the question, why the miracle? Was it just to impress these four fishermen? He could have done it in some other way, but he chose to do it this way. Was it to help one of them or more to meet tax obligations as represented uh, in a popular program? I don't think so. Strabo, the geographer, spends some time talking about the lake the Lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee. And down the west shoreline, about four and a half miles, is a little town called Tarachiae, which is related to the term, Greek term, which means salted fish. The other name for it that we may be more acquainted with is Magdala, the... the hometown of Mary Magdalene. All it takes for them to do something is to row their boats down the, down the shoreline or put up their sails 
and sail their boats down the shoreline till they get to Magdala and have all those fish salted, have them brined. That, that means that with that many fish in those boats now salted, they will not spoil. Otherwise, within 48 hours, all those fish will spoil sitting in the boats, and they'll do no one any good. What Jesus has done is provided food for the families of these men. He knows he's calling away the breadwinners from their families, and he is sensitive about that, and he now provides them food and also enough from the catch to sell in the market and to meet their other needs by sales and purchase of other things. So he has helped their families. There is a passage in section 118 of the Doctrine and Covenants where the Lord is talking about the twelve, and he says, Let the residue of the twelve continue to preach from that hour, and if they will do this in all loneliness of heart, In meekness and humility and long-suffering, I, the Lord, give unto them a promise that I will provide for their families, and an effectual door shall be opened for them, both families and the twelve, from henceforth, he says. So, the promise made to the original Quorum of the Twelve mirrors what Jesus did back next to the shore of the Sea of Galilee.